Hey guys, so today we're actually going to be taking a look at a sparking tier list created by the folks over at GamePress. Now, if you're new to Legends or are just looking for a place to read up on the game, this website is a great resource for team building. And I personally get tons of tweets asking if certain characters are good uh, or if certain characters can fit on different teams. Uh, While well, this website will generally have all the answers that you could need uh, in respect to those two things in general. Now, back in the early days of Legends, I admittedly did not agree with a lot of the decisions that this website made in terms of tier lists and teams, but I think as time has gone by, the quality of work by GamePress has vastly improved, uh, and then for myself as well, my outlook on what makes certain units valuable has also changed over the course of a year and a half of playing this game. Now before we dive into the list, first things first, I will leave a link to the tier list in the description of this video down below, and please note that when it comes to discussing what units are quote unquote better than others, there oftentimes is not a correct answer, especially when comparing units that are trying to fulfill different roles, right? So if you have a support unit versus like a damage dealing unit or like a tanky unit versus a support unit, it's impossible to really compare them um, in a fair way. Um, but nonetheless, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on uh, this discussion video here, so don't be hesitant in leaving a comment down below and hopefully we can get a good discussion going. So without further ado, let's get into this. All right, so first we have Z tier. Let's go ahead and take a look at what they describe Z tier uh, characters as being. The absolute best fighters in the game. These fighters have a team or multiple teams built around them and have full team support, which allows them to accentuate how powerful their toolkits are. They also own an ability that exerts control over core gaming systems and forces enemy teams to play around a single fighter. So before we jump into one by one units, I just want to sort of talk about how I'm going to be evaluating these units. Um, I actually was in contact with one of the uh, contributors to the tier list over on Game Press, and he was telling me how they take into account the current meta as well as the teams that these units are ran on, which makes sense because, I mean, a unit's going to be better if his team is better. That's just how it is, right? So I think when you compare someone like, I don't know, like Super Baby 2 and LF Piccolo and then Majin Buu, these are clearly, and also 21 as well, they're just all on the same team. They're all in a region, which then in turn makes the team just excessively powerful. Uh, because you're able to you know, use these guys all together and the team just becomes better just because there's better units on the team. This is how it is. Uh, and then you compare that to something like Movies. Um, movies was also extremely powerful at the time uh, when it was in its, its the heyday of Movies. But now we have this Bardock up here. Um, and this Bardock has pretty much single-handedly been able to nullify everything this Gohan wants to do. I'm not saying that this Gohan is now bad. I'm just saying there's a direct meta counter to him in the game now with this Bardock being in the game. Uh, but I don't think that detracts from how good this Gohan is by himself. Like, just because a unit has a counter doesn't mean that this unit is now bad or, or just basically non-existent anymore. Like, there's still a force to be reckoned with in the game. And I think we'll see that pop up later on as well. Uh, but I don't like judging units just solely based on how good that unit is specifically. Like, how much can they carry the team themselves? I think it's important to also think about... How much are they actually impacting the team overall, whether it's through defensive abilities, whether it's through supporting abilities, or just pure damage, right? So let's start with Android 21. I think when this unit came out, I mean, you guys saw my breakdown. If you guys saw my breakdown video, I went nuts when I saw the, the, uh, the details for this character. And I still think she holds up. I mean, it hasn't been that long since she came out. What has it been, like a month, a little bit more? She probably is, I would consider her top three in the game, at least, right? So. Ranking her as number one overall, I don't have any arguments against that. I think that's a fair ranking for her. Her being on regen is a big factor um, in terms of how good she is, because if she was on something like female war... Well, if her main team was female warriors, then I think it might be a little bit different. I don't know if I would call her the best in the game, but she would definitely still be up there. Uh, female warriors, obviously, is not as impactful as regen is right now in the meta, so that definitely um, plays a role in her ranking as well. Um, I mean, insane damage. She heals her... Color is pretty good because there's a lot of powerful green units in the, green units in the meta right now. Um, she doesn't really have any flaws. The only thing I can really think of is that she's not super good at tanking damage. But her team is, right? You have Baby, you have Pickle, you have Boo. All these guys are insanely good at taking damage and just, you know, healing and everything. So her being on this team, again, definitely cements her position as a top three unit in the game, in my opinion. All right, next we have this Bardock. <laughs> Yeah, this was one of the other characters I saw the details for on uh, DBZ Space when the download happened, and um, 
I was, to be honest, I was a little blown away by how good he, how good this guy is. Um, I do not have any qualms with him being all the way up here. He, they rank him at number two. I would not disagree with that at all. I think um, him being potentially a, like literally a direct counter to this yellow Gohan is um, something the game really needed because this guy was been. When did this banner come out for this guy? This guy and Bojack like November, I think. It was like five, four or five months at this point with this Gohan has just been like super annoying to deal with. And they released Janemba, who was obviously really powerful against this Gohan, but this guy completely shuts him down. I mean, you lock this guy in with Bardock, Bardock takes 50% less damage. You Gohan locks Bardock in for some reason, Bardock takes 50% less damage, and he's just going to kill Gohan. So this guy, I mean, he also has a, a cover change on Blast, strike art, or blast Arts cards. Uh, he can heal this green card. He just has a lot going for him in his kit. His damage is off the charts. He's probably the best last man standing unit in the game. I mean, even more so than like LF Gohan or LF uh, Namek Goku, I'd say this guy's probably better in that regard as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely warranted that he's all the way up here as well. Super Saiyan 4 Goku, I've seen a lot of people sort of um, not trash talking him, but not uh, not as high on this character as Game Press puts him up there because they put him up here as the third best unit in the game right now. Um, I could see it. Personally, I don't think he's better than someone like Super Baby 2. I think is more impactful to the game right now than Super Saiyan 4 Goku is, but I think Super Saiyan 4 Goku is definitely being underrated by a lot of people. I mean, he heals every time he switches in, uh, which is very powerful. He has damage reduction, so he's not hes not like a glass cannon. I think that's one of the reasons that sets him apart from Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta is because Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, while he does a ton of damage, he really doesn't do much uh, in the department of taking damage back, and I think that's a big part of the meta right now because you're facing a lot of regen, and you're just simply not ever going to be just gunning regen down immediately. Regen is a team that's going to be stalling the game, healing, tanking, and someone like Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta is going to be a lot less effective against regen than I think this Goku is. Um, so this Goku is very good. His, this sustain is very good as well because his key recovery, he, he, again, he gets key on switch in. He gets key whenever an enemy switches in. Uh, his main ability gives him key, gives him an ultimate, so there's a lot of ways for him to get access to key and continue combos, which is a very, very important part of uh, basically the game and how the game operates right now in terms of Battle System 2.1. So I'm not going to argue with him being here. I think this is, so far, the top three that I have are, are fine, in my opinion. Next, we have my favorite unit, personally, is the Yellow Gohan. Now... <laughs> As much as I hate this yellow Gohan, I can't argue with him being up here as well because he's just, his kid is just too good. Like, his green card is probably one of the best in the game. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of options that, there's a lot of, like, opportunities where that green card can just be unavoidable. And you're just going to have to take a combo just because it, it, you literally cannot avoid it. It's just, it's super insane. Like, you, you perfect vanish somebody and you can use the green card. You, um someone dodges you and sidesteps, you can use the green card. And sometimes even in mid-range, if you're just like floating around, the green card will catch people off guard because um, a lot of people don't know that you literally are forced to stand at long range versus this guy because of that fact. And then, if that wasn't bad enough, he locks you in for 10, count for 10 counts. <laughs> and he is uh, the thing that makes this guy super oppressive is the fact that he can then start a combo on you with you locked in. And he gets his second main ability before the lock expires, so he can oftentimes just kill you with one combo before the lock goes away. Um, and I think that design is what makes this guy super op oppressive with you with the right team, right? So I can't argue with this guy being up here as well. Uh, he's been super good for a very long time, and even with someone like Bardock up here, I feel like I could bump this guy down a little bit just because, you know, in the meta right now, he's definitely going to be hampered by that fact that this Bardock now exists. Because prior to this Bardock, there was pretty much no one that could really th threat the hold a hold a candle to this Gohan. Even red units, besides maybe Janemba. But even Janemba, I mean, you would just lock him in with this Gohan, switch to blue Vegeta, and then he would just be dead. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I, personally, I'd probably move this guy down a little bit, but I, I'm not going to move him out of Z tier. I think he still belongs in Z tier for sure. Next we have LF Piccolo. Um, I think LF Piccolo by himself is probably not Z tier material, but the fact that he's paired up with someone like Super Baby 2, um, it, it just makes him too good because of the fact that he heals. Super Baby 2 lets him heal more. Then he's on a team with with uh, Majin Buu Zenkai, and then he's on a team with Intro 21, who also heals. I mean, it's just his team, again, all these regen characters, their team makes them who they are and makes them super good. 
Uh, yeah, he does a lot. Of, he does a lot of tanking. He does a lot of damage. He does decent amounts of healing. And then there's, there's like some kind of bug in the game right now where he can like heal some ludicrous amount of, of uh, health back. But I'm not counting that towards how good I think this guy is. Uh, he's definitely up there for sure. Um, but let's say, for example, five months from now, or not, not even five months from now. Let's just say that, for example, right now, Regen was not the best team in the game, and it was like top five. Maybe maybe it was like the fifth best team in the game. So it wasn't like, insanely good, but it wasn't bad at all. I don't think this guy would be up here. I think his team is enabling him to be as good as he is. And that's not necessarily a bad thing either. I think that's fine. The game needs like units that synergize off of other units to make them good. And I think, obviously, Dragon Ball Legends is a team-based game. You're going to always be using three characters, not just one. So even though you can have certain characters like this Gohan who just consult, can like literally single-handedly win you the game. Same thing with this Bardock, right? Characters like... This baby, who thrive off of having other units that are going to make use of his healing, like, that's fine. I don't have an issue with that. And so, for that reason, I think Piccolo is fine being in Z tier right now. But again, just him alone, eh, it's tough to say. Super Baby 2, I would... P <laughs> this might sound crazy. I would put this guy up here as number 2, probably, or 1, potentially. He single-handedly has enabled regen to just make an explosive comeback after being irrelevant for a super long period of time in this game. Um, it, it, the fact that he heals on switch out, the, the entire team, it's it's insane. Like, you compare this guy to uh, LF Frieza who just came out. LF Frieza heals himself on switch out, which is good. But this guy's doing this, to, this guy's doing it to the entire team. And his main ability increases the amount the team heals when he switches out, and increases the healing of everyone as well. And everyone on regen essentially is healing, so the fact that this guy boosts the amount that they heal through his main ability, it's like, this guy was just, I, honestly, like, <laughs> when people complain about regen, a lot of times they're like, oh my god, Zenkai Boo is so annoying, or oh my god, Android 21 is so annoying. No, the, the real issue is this guy. Uh, this guy is the one that enables the regen team to drag on fights for as long as they can. And, um... For someone like Zenkai Boo, um, we're going to get to him in a second, but for someone like Zenkai Boo, um, <laughs> the, the baby is the one who's enabling him to heal as much as he is, even with his main ability too. So for me, this guy right now is probably the most op single-handedly oppressive unit in the game, and I'd probably put him somewhere up here. Maybe, honestly, I might even stick him at the number one spot. Uh, that's just what I feel. Um, let me know what you guys think about Super Baby 2. I think a lot of people overlook him, but secretly he's probably the most oppressive unit in the game right now. All right, now we have everyone's favorite character, Zenkai Boo. For in terms of Zenkai Awake, Zenkai Awakened units, I think the way this list—I should have clarified this before looking—but I think the way this list does it, I said, I said, I think they take them at Zenkai level one, um, which is fair because it's you know it's free to play if you have the unit of seven stars. So I'm not, not going to get into the whole Zenkai discussion right now, but. Zenkai 1 Boo is still insanely good. And if you're talking about Zenkai 7, he goes up here. <laughs> Along with some some another Zenkai character we'll get to later. Um, but yeah, this guy goes all the way up to here. Zenkai 7 at Zenkai 1. He's still in Z tier, so he's definitely insanely good still, even at Zenkai 1. Healing, locking. The locking is so, so oppressive. Like The units that lock in this game, notice we have one guy who locks. We have another guy who locks. We have three guys who lock all in Z tier. It's not a coincidence. That ability is just oppressive. It's just super broken. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Boo, it's not, really, it's not really difficult to explain why he's so good, right? I think putting him in Z tier is not a mistake at all. Even at Zenkai 1, he's just, he just does everything. Heals, tanks, does damage. Literally just a perfect unit. Except the only thing he doesn't do is support, which would be way too good if he did. So... Yeah, that's uh, that's Zenkai level one boo. Now we have Bojack. This is the last unit we have in the Z tier category. This is going to be a long video. I just realized. <laughs> um, the thing that makes this guy super insane is the cover change ability, where he can literally nullify everything except for a rising rush. But the thing that makes Bojack so insane, in my opinion, is the fact that you don't even have to use it to make him good. Um, once you start getting into the higher ranks of PvP, I know this might not be applicable to a lot of players because uh, it takes a lot of tech and knowledge of how the game works for you to pull this off, but once you start getting into the higher ranks, a lot of players are able to sort of predict when you're going to bring in the units that perform cover change abilities like this Bojack, like Super Vegito, like even just cover cut, like full power freezes cover cut. Um, and then they intentionally drop the combo so that they don't 
have to bear the burden of getting like hit by a cover change ability. Um, and the fact that a lot of players attempt to do that, you can actually use that to your advantage if you have this guy on your team. So for example, if I have a uh, Transforming Vegeta out on the field, and I'm getting comboed by someone on the enemy team, and he is going to predict that I'm switching to Bojack, so he's going to delay the combo and drop it, I can just not switch into Bojack and vanish with the Vegeta. So without even using this Bojack's cover change ability, the fact that he exists on your team and has that ability in his arsenal is already effective enough to make him insanely good. So he doesn't, have to, he doesn't even have to do anything, and he's already very good. And then if he gets the cover change off, you just save yourself a lot of damage in, in the course of uh, what, you, what, what you would be taking uh, from that combo, basically. So, I mean, him in combination with his Gohan are very, very good together. Um, I assume a lot of you guys have fought Bojack a million times at this point, so I'm not going to go super deep into it. But yeah, definitely agree that Bojack is in Z tier, uh, at, least, at least down here, right? So that was the Z tier list. We're going to go ahead and now take a look at S tier. Okay, so now we're taking a look at S tier. Let's take a look at what they, uh, they say about this tier. Not too drastically different from the fighters in Z tier, these fighters have a few minuscule flaws that don't let them take over the game consistently or lack proper tag support, which in turn compromises how well they perform, but are still on the cusp of Z tier. And that sort of ties into what I was talking about earlier, um, where even if the unit is super good by themselves, they really need support in some way to bring out their full potential. And that's why I think all these guys up here definitely at least deserve to be in the discussion for being in Z tier. Now we're talking about some controversial stuff here. I saw a lot of people were very upset seeing this guy here. A lot of people were upset seeing this guy here. And a lot of people were upset seeing this guy here. Especially with this guy being in front of him. Um, so let's start with uh, this um, LF Vegeta here. LF Vegeta, um, he is probably one of my favorite units in the game. And the fact that they just added him onto the future tag makes this guy a lot more valuable because you're gonna start seeing units like Blue Goku from the Future Trunks Saga, Blue Vegito from the Future Trunks Saga, and maybe even more copies of this guy who now are gonna be on that tag, whereas before that update were not gonna be on that tag. Which would have hurt this guy's usability a lot because this guy would only be on Vegeta Family and God Key. He does fit well on God Key, um, paired up with a lot of other God Key units, which, which we'll, we'll get into them later, but notice there's no God Key up here. There's one god key down here, and he's also green. So I think that reason um, makes this guy not super, super good. I think by himself, he's insanely powerful. But the fact that he doesn't really have many like Omega level units to support him and enable him to perform the best that he can, I think is what sort of keeps him away from the Z tier area. And if we're talking about that, I think the same thing can be said for Super Vegito. Super Vegito, when he came out, was like so insanely oppressive that it wasn't even funny. Like he was the best unit, not even close. Now, you take a look at his team in um, Fusion Warriors, and it's not really that good anymore. I'm expecting them to release some kind of Fusion Warrior character soon. We just got, well, you didn't just get Green Gogeta, but we got him semi recently, and he's pretty underwhelming in my opinion, so I don't really think he did the team justice in any way, and this guy is, you know, still holding on decently well uh, in terms of how good he is, but being a Legends Limited unit and not being on the best team ever kind of hurts him in the long run. Main ability is still incredibly good, probably one of the best in the game at this point still. Uh, removing attribute upgrades and buffs is just way too, way too good, especially if you're like the last man standing and you're fighting the other last man standing on the enemy team, you pretty much just instantly win the game. <laughs> Um, but yeah, his, his sustain is still very good. The ability that he has to just constantly be getting buffs from the enemy using uh, arts cards. Uh, him getting buffs from drawing cards. Uh, he, has, he can heal himself. I mean, it, it, he does a lot. But again, his team is just lacking, and I think that's what hurts him in, in the long run. We'll, we'll go back to this guy in a second. I just want to talk about LF Goku, the dynamic Goku. Um, when this guy came out, I considered him one of the best units in the game. Probably top two at the time. This was right after the anniversary, maybe like a month or two after they came out with the Namek Step Up banner, which featured him in Full Power Frieza. He was insane. His blue card, obviously, to this day, is probably the best blue card in the game. Um, people literally build teams around him using Hercule and Bunny Bulma to make this guy like, unleash his, his basically latent power, right, with the blue card, because they both hold blue cards. 
Um, I feel like at this point, a lot of people have figured out the best ways to play around this guy. And especially at the higher level, like, like you have players that are able to, you know, utilize tackle efficiently, utilize like sidestepping and feints and like be like fake out your enemy. So it's kind of difficult to actually use this guy at this point because everybody knows how to play around him. And we've had experience in being able to do that for a long time. Now that's not to say that even playing around this guy can lead to you like messing up or not doing it correctly. So this guy definitely is still super, super, super powerful. And his Z ability is insanely good as well. Double offensive buffs for Saiyans. Like that's, that's insane. He, I think he was the first unit in the game that did that. Um, now we have um, Raditz too, but we'll, I don't think we're going to even talk. We're not even going to get to him. He's like way <laughs> down there. Um, this Goku is really, really good. Um, I would not be opposed if somebody put him up here. J just because of the fact that Saiyans got a lot of uh, support in this past update, uh, I could see him being put up there. But the, the fact that this guy now isn't in the game, I personally like this guy better than the Namek Goku because I think he fulfills what the Saiyan team needed more than this guy. This guy is just a last man standing hard hitting unit, which is good. Like the, de the game definitely needs units that do that. Um, but I think I do agree with uh, Game Press in this uh, in this instance that I think this guy is slightly edges out the Namek Goku here. I might even put this guy up above Super Vegito as well, um, because he he literally plugs up the holes of the Saiyan team. Like he himself does a lot of damage, and he supports all of the Saiyans on this team, and he has an ultimate that hits insanely hard. It heals and it restores key. I mean, this guy's doing a lot. Recovers Vanish, Key Restores off the charts. Um, I feel like in the normal course of battle, you're going to be making a lot more uh, plays with this guy than Namek Goku. Uh, Namek Goku obviously is a lot more tanky because of the cover cut that he gets when he switches in. This guy definitely is uh, not supposed to be used as a tank or a damage, uh, basically a damage sponge in any way because he's super fragile. Um, that is definitely why I think he's down here in S and not up in Z, because if he was able to take damage, he would definitely be up here in Z tier. Uh, probably the most underrated unit of the new units that came out in the batch, and I highly urge everybody to make use of this Goku if you have him. Um, very, very good unit. Uh, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta we did talk about a little bit in the uh, when, we, when we were up in Z tier, right, with Super Saiyan 4 Goku. I mentioned how in this meta, you really don't want to be only doing damage, and you want to have that ability to take at least some damage, but I just finished talking about this guy who basically couldn't take any damage, but they're relatively close, I think, in terms of usability, right? This Vegeta is going to do insane damage. His main ability, comboed into an ultimate arts card, is going to do crazy damage with a chance to faint, which is still one of the most annoying abilities in the entire game. Um... Yeah, it's just, this guy is super one-dimensional, right? He's only doing damage, that's it. His whole kit is just doing damage. He does a little tiny bit of supporting with his main ability in terms of, like, ultimate arts cards and stuff like that, but it's it's really not big enough of a buff to really merit talking about at all. I don't really think it affects much right now. Um, so I do kind of agree with where he's placed here. Uh, he does a ton of damage, so he, that's something that, that's that's... You can't, you can't deny that, right? It just does a ton of damage. Uh, but there's a lot of other units that do a ton of damage too, and um, do other stuff as well, like this guy, Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Just can tank well, heals, does a, does a ton of damage. Not as much damage as Vegeta, but does a ton of damage. Android 21, does a ton of damage, heals, literally has like infinite card draw speed, and uh, draws a card on switch in, and draws a card on main ability, and transform it, like, no comparison. So, that's Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. Now we have Shallot. <laughs> um, if, you put Sha if you took Shallot and you dragged him all the way up here, like over here, in front of Gohan, I would not argue with it. This guy, once he transforms into Super Saiyan 3, it, it, gets, it, gets, it just gets dumb. <laughs> the, the amount of damage this guy's able to put out once transformed, it's... It, it's... It's, I think it's higher than anybody else in the game, to be honest. I mean, you let him build up with his arts cards, he has increased draw speed, he can tank exceptionally well as a Super Saiyan 3. The one big drawback, obviously, with this guy is the fact that it's a time transformation. If this guy started the match as a Super Saiyan 3, and it wasn't a transformation, he was just in that form the entire time, 
and it never expired, he would be here. He would be the best unit of the game, I think, personally. Um, the ability to choose what special move he uses too is really, really good because you can choose something like the uh, Zenkai Red Goku's Kamehameha do a ton of damage. You could even choose something like the uh, the Sin Shenron ability to reduce the Dragon Balls of your enemy. <laughs> it's like you, you could do a bunch of crazy stuff, like even Broly's uh, Zenkai Blue Broly's special move to, to, to stun. That's a really good. That's, that's the one I use the most often, just because uh, or faint. Sorry, not stun, because faint is just it turns the tide of battle like instantly. So. Um, this guy's very, very good. Again, the only drawback is him. Once his transformation expires, he's essentially just fodder. He's terrible. Um, in base form, he's, he's just useless. He sucks. Uh, so it's a pretty big difference. And for that reason, I think I definitely see him being uh, up in S tier, not all the way up in Z tier. So I think that I do agree with this placement of Shallot. We'll go back to Cooler and I'll have Frieza later. We'll talk about Vegeta for now. Uh, Vegeta, you know, I do really like Vegeta. Um, but I kind of fallen off on him a little bit. I do understand why he's up here, though, because he is a core member of the movies team, and he definitely deserves to be a core member of the movies team because Gohan and Bojack are just, again, like I mentioned earlier, they definitely both deserve to be in Z tier. Um, and I think this guy does a pretty good job of complementing what they want to be doing, right? He's a strike-based movies character. That's what the team is, strike-based movies team. That's what it probably will be for a very long time now because basically all the, all the good movies characters are strike-based. Um... So he's the best blue type movie character, if you're, if you're excluding Zenkai 7 Blue Broly, because in that case, he's the best character on that team. But this uh, Vegeta, I mean, Blast Armor is very good. He just hits really hard. He can heal up with a special move. He's doing a lot. Um, the ability to take damage is a little bit lacking, I think. So there's that to talk about. But um, yeah, in terms of offensive power, very, very powerful. But kind of one dimensional. Um, I mean, Blast Armor can be seen as a as, as kind of like a, a defensive utility a little bit, I guess. I don't know. It's tough to really talk about it. I think I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say Vegeta should be moved down to tier one here. Um, but we'll talk about tier one later. And I think there's a character in tier one that could easily replace this guy in terms of being up here in tier S. So, those are my thoughts on Super Saiyan um, transforming Super Saiyan Vegeta Blue. Um, now let's talk about Beerus. Uh, Beerus at Zenkai 7 is here. Like, <laughs> he's the best unit in the game, I think, still to this day. Beerus Zenkai 7, he does everything. He's, he's crazy. Cr like, stupid. Like, he shouldn't even be in the game. Um, I do think he is probably better than Zenkai 7 Boo, by the way. Uh, Zenkai 7 Beerus, it's just, it's just, too, he's just too oppressive. Um, but Zenkai level 1 Beerus, he is good. He gets a massive buff because prior to Zenkai 1, he is terrible. He doesn't do anything. So, desperately needed that, that Zenkai level 1 buff there. Um, he's, uh, you know, if you have if you have uh, at least one copy of this LF Vegeta, I would say use him over Zenkai level 1 Beerus. Um, but this guy definitely isn't bad, especially if you pair him up with Whis. He can do a lot of damage even at Zenkai level 1. Now, granted, I don't have a lot of experience using this guy at Zenkai level 1 because I pretty much instantly got this guy to 7 because I was super excited that he got buffed, but... Um, I've seen other people use this guy at Zenkai level 1, he does seem very solid um, for what he is, so... Um, you know, he could definitely make it... You, you could definitely make a case for him to be in, in, in S tier, but... Him being sort of on the cusp, I think, is a good call by Game Press. I do... I do... I probably agree with this placement of him. Alright, so now... Now we'll talk about this. This is pretty much the only thing I, like, heavily disagree with on this list, I think. I think they... Overall, did a very, very good job of creating this tier list. Um, this is the one thing I really don't agree with. So, I left Frieza here. Frieza, before this guy even was uh, shown off, before his kit was even revealed, I made a video talking about what I want out of an LF Frieza unit. And I was like, okay, well, you know, if they release uh, a support unit that grants key damage and some kind of, like, cover change ability, that's all I want. As long as he's not like some like super squishy support type character, I'd be super happy about that because that was the one thing that the Lineage of Evil team slash Frieza Force team did not have access to, was like a, um, a super uh, consistent support unit that was able to just provide key on switch out, extend combos, um, 
and provide all that good stuff to the team. Uh, and they they basically plugged up every single hole I just mentioned in in that little rant there, and also the, the video that I, that I put out. I was super happy to see what they did with this guy. After using him for probably over 200 plus games now, I've had a you know, and I've had ample time to test this guy out at this point. I would definitely move this guy up to Z tier. Um, but the one issue that I think people would have with that is the fact that this guy definitely could not carry on his own. Um, and that's why I made the point at the beginning of this video to discuss why I think certain units should be placed in certain tiers. Like, yeah, this Frieza, if he's a last man standing unit, he's really not good. Well, he's good, but he's not even close to someone like this guy or this guy or any of these guys up here. Any of these characters up here are better in a last man standing situation than this Frieza is. Even anyone in here, except for maybe this 21. Pretty much anyone here is better than this Frieza in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Um, and I don't think that's I don't think that's that's like that's like a novel concept, right? It's it's pretty obvious. But this guy having a blue card, this guy just giving a flat percentage boost to attack just for existing this guy getting 50% key recovery to free to lineage of evil like this guy's going to be the best unit on, on the lineage of evil team for forever maybe i mean <laughs> as a support unit you're not really going to have that, that much competition in terms of like when this guy's going to get replaced eventually probably never i mean he's doing everything the team needs um but then you take a look at someone like the purple cooler up here who they have higher than the frieza that is like the one thing I really disagree with because they're saying as a purple character they would rather choose this character over this character. I think is what they're insinuating by putting him higher, right? And while I do think this cooler is probably be the better overall character in terms of like his impact, well not, not even his impact, just like his uh, his presence on the field in terms of like being like actually like present, like switched in. Because he's tanking, he's doing damage. He's doing. He's definitely doing a lot more damage than this Frieza is. Uh, he's healing. You know, he's he's doing all of this stuff. He's even doing support with his passive, where he gets hit and buffs the entire team. He's not. He's there's there's no way you can tell me that this guy impacts the team more than this guy. There's no way. I do think prior to this Frieza coming out, this cooler is probably the best unit on the Lineage of Evil team. Um, I'm just gonna throw this out there. I've dropped this guy from the team. I, I've just straight up, I straight up dropped this guy from the team. And if we scroll all the way down here, I replaced him with this guy. <laughs> so this is someone else I would definitely bump way up, maybe even all the way up here into tier one, near towards the top of tier one. Maybe not a well, not above this guy, but maybe somewhere around here. Maybe I probably would move this guy up as well, just because of the fact that this guy now exists makes this guy better. The fact that this guy exists now makes this guy way better uh, because this guy really wants to be used with blue cards. The fact that that guy exists makes both these guys better and also this red Frieza. So the simple fact that this guy was added into the game, I think you could bump up all the Lineage of Evil units up higher. Um, but I don't know. This guy's probably good somewhere around upper tier one, maybe low S tier. Um, this guy, you, you could probably move him up a little bit, but I wouldn't move him up a lot. Uh, blue cooler is kind of like okay. This guy could move up a bit. This guy I would definitely move up. I mean, this guy wants to be using a bunch of blue cards, and the new Frieza holds a blue card, so um, they go really well together. Especially if you like switch into this guy, get his strike arts uh, cover change ability to go off, use a green card, switch into this guy, and this guy can just go to town. So I don't know. I feel like if you put this. I feel like there's no way you can put this Android 21 above Frieza because this 21 is also a support type unit. And I think Frieza is like easily the best support type unit in the entire game. Not even close, unless you're counting Zenkai 7 Beerus, in which case he's not even a support type unit anymore. He's just God. <laughs> um, but the reason why I think they have 21 up here uh, is because of the fact that she and her summonable counterpart make like the best uh, partnership in the game one of the best partnerships in the game basically was the old, the old best partnership of the game was this guy and red Vegito, but their kits weren't even designed to work together it was just their z abilities these guys like you switch from her into the purple 21 like she's gonna be just destroying everybody and that was intended right 
I think this Frieza does that for every lineage unit, not just one. And the team, like, the regen didn't need this 21 on the team to be good. Like, it already had a bunch of good units. Like, Baby himself is a support, is a support, like, unit. Like, he's the second best probably support unit in the game in terms of, like, damage-wise. Like, I don't know. I feel like we, we already talked about this guy, but he's just oppressive in more ways than one. But I don't know. I can't see this Android 21 having a bigger impact on her team than this, this Frieza does. And on the overall game as well. If you're fighting a team, if you're fighting a regen team, and if you're fighting a lineage team, I would be a hundred percent more worried about this Frieza being alive than this twenty one being alive. That's just my that's just what I'm that's just my thoughts, right? So that's gonna wrap up S tier. Um let me know down below what you guys think. I think this is probably the most controversial tier we're gonna talk about here. I think we'll go through tier one. Not not everything, because there's so many characters here. Um, we'll, we'll kind of touch on all the fighters here, and then I think we're going to call this a video because this is getting super, super long. Alright, so I think what we're going to do here is we're going to go through this tier 1 list here. We're not going to go super in-depth into every uh, unit here because there's so many. Uh, and then after tier 1, we're probably going to call it a video just because this is getting really long. And, you know, everything after tier 1 is kind of just like, you know, you don't, you don't really ever want to use these guys. Except for this guy, which I was just talking about. Definitely move him up. But I don't think you're really going to ever use a lot of these guys. Maybe Hit can be used. I mean, Zenkai 1, Broly, Goku Black, Gohan are all pretty good. This guy's not terrible. Kid Buu is okay. You got Zenkai 1 of this guy who's not bad. Some of the more niche uh, characters in the game, I feel like, are down here. Not bad. Definitely not bad units. But they're not some of the best that you'll see constantly in PvP. So we'll take a look at what they talk about for Tier 1. Fighters that make up uh, for their minuscule or moderately noticeable flaws by being good choices in solid teams. They still have very strong above average toolkits, but are not extremely over the top powerful. They can still be the go to fighters to form a consistently strong team around. Okay, that, that definitely seems suitable for what this, uh, this tier seems to be right now. The first character they have is Red Janemba. Now, easily, this guy's best asset is his green card. And the fact that he draws a green card on main ability makes him really, really good. Initially, he was super... I, I thought he was going to be insanely powerful because of the fact that he directly counters this Gohan, and he was the main threat in the game at that point. So, yeah, he's definitely really good. I don't think I'd put him into S tier, but he's, I think this is a good spot for him. Now, this guy... There's only two characters in this in this tier list that... And, uh, sorry, in this tier that I would consider moving up a lot, and this is one of them. I've been using this guy for a while now. He is super impressive. I mean, his green card, probably one of the best green cards in the game. Gives you key back, supports the entire team. I think it's, what, 30% damage? And it has blast armor. It's really, really good. Um, and the fact that this guy also then also gets damage and um, damage reduction every time he gets uh, hit with an arts card, really good unit. I mean, I, he's on my main god key team. I run him with Beerus. Him and Beerus and Whis are my, the trio that I usually use. Um, yeah, I think this guy can easily fit in S tier, maybe even mid S tier. I think he's definitely better than this blue Vegeta, uh, just on his own. I think I'd probably put him right next to Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. That might seem blasphemous, but <laughs> I really do like this guy a lot. This guy, he's been good for a while. I don't really think we need to talk about this guy too much. He's just solid all around. Deserves to be here for sure. Rosé, same thing about Rosé. He can take a little bit of damage if you don't pop his main to make him neutral against blue types. If someone like um, like, like this uh, movie's Vegeta can really do a number on Rosé if you don't have uh, his uh, his main ability pop to give him uh, elephant factor nullification. So he's good. Uh, ultimate does a ton of damage. Full power Frieza, he's definitely a lot better now because of the fact that this Frieza now exists because he really wants to just be shoving out those pizzas. <laughs> he really wants to be shoving out those... Uh, Special moves as much as possible uh, in combination with his main ability. So I probably would move this guy up to low S, maybe. He's kind of on similar footing to this Janemba, but his cover cut makes him, I think, a lot better. In addition, he also has Endurance. Yeah, and he gets key on switch in too, which makes him even better with this guy, because if you switch from this guy into full power, he gets basically full key guaranteed. Um, I, I, I think I'd... Now, look, thinking about it more now, I think I'd move this guy up in, into S somewhere, maybe maybe like over here somewhere, low S. I think that that would be suitable for him. This guy, I think I'd probably actually move down a little bit. He's not bad at all. I mean, he's still in Tier 1. I just don't think he's as good as someone like Cell um, or even, well, eh, it's hard to say. I think Cell's definitely better than this baby Vegeta. He's 
interesting because he is the first, I think, Saiyan, just all-purpose Saiyan supporter who gives key on Switch Out, which is super uh, important for uh, extending combos, which again is a big part of what this game has come in, has uh, turned into uh, with Battle System 2.1. You want to extend combos for as long as possible. But um, he just hasn't been like super, super impressive to me at all. I don't know. I'd probably move him down a little bit if, if I could. Cell, he's still really good. You guys don't need a lecture on Cell. Android 13, um, he was really good when he came out. Same thing with this Goku. I think, I think, if, is Android 13 better than the Goku? I think they're really similar. Um, this Goku is probably more practical. I think I probably like this Goku better than Android 13. Android 13 does have a very powerful ultimate, but obviously this Goku does as well. This Goku probably has a better green card as well. Uh, he removes buffs on special move too. I think it's like a 50% chance to remove all attribute upgrades on special move hit. Um, I don't know. I think Goku's probably going to take the cake over this guy. So I would either move this guy down a little bit or move Goku up a decent amount. Uh, but he's definitely not bad Android 13. He does have the cover change ability too, which is useful in a lot of cases. Have Buhan. Now, a lot of people have a bad, I guess, image of this character because he's on so many banners, but that doesn't necessarily detract from his usefulness, I think, because he's actually really good still. One of the better regen characters, but the sad part about that is that regen has just been getting so many good characters that it's this guy's sort of fallen off because he, he himself is like super good, but there's just better characters on the team. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. He's just, he's good, but there's just better characters on the team. Um, so, yeah. This guy, I, again, because of the fact that this guy exists, I'll probably move him up a little bit. I think he's definitely better than Android 13. Uh, probably not better than Rose. Definitely not. Uh, is he better than Cell? Eh, it's tough. I think Cell might edge him out a little bit. I think I'd move him up like two, two spots here. I think I'm comfortable doing that. He's actually very tanky once you transform with him. And he does decent damage, and he has a very, very powerful support buff versus Saiyans, which is like half the game, so... <laughs> He's gonna be useful in one way, one way or the other, I think. This guy's really good because he has probably the best Saiyan Z ability in the game. Nah, he, I think Namagoku has a better one, because Namagoku is Super Saiyans as well as Saiyans, so that affects, like, hybrid Saiyans that are Super Saiyans, too. But this guy has double offensive buffs for uh, Saiyans, which is really, really good. I mean... You are probably going to be seeing this guy on the bench for like every Saiyan team moving forward in perpetuity. <laughs> he himself, uh, he fizzles out after 60 counts, but he still can do decent damage. Uh, his green card does remove attribute upgrades once only, uh, which is good. So you want to use that strategically. Um, he's not hes not bad. Uh, he's not super good. I think I'd probably move him down a few, a few uh, spots on here, though, because I think someone like this guy and this guy are better. Sin Shenron, so this is the only sparking character on uh, in the game that I don't own. I am probably going to go back into the banner try and pull at least one copy of him, because right now my Sin Shenron is sitting at 90 Z power from the freebies, and I definitely want to at least get him 0 star if possible. So, I don't know, I can't really talk too much about him because I haven't actually used him uh, just straight up. But I have played against him a lot, and he is really tanky, and he fills a role in the GT team that, hasn't, that doesn't really have a spot right now, which is... Uh, just a straight up tank, right? He's the only tank on that team. So that makes him valuable. Uh, I think he's fine here. I, I would agree with that. Now, this guy's interesting. This is probably the only other unit on, on, in uh, Tier 1 that I would say I would consider moving up a lot. So maybe like even like all the way up here towards the front of Tier 1. Uh, but the only issue with this guy is you need heavy support. So like, I would be running Zenkai 7 Beerus and Whis along with this Vegeta. And the amount of damage you can do, so let's say you, you switch out of Beerus into Whis, and then you go from Whis into Vegeta, and then Vegeta's going to be having the um, support from Whis as well as Beerus, and Beerus is going to be debuffing the enemy too. Vegeta at that point is going to be locking the enemy in, and if you just chain like two or three strike guards, a lot of the time he can just kill the enemy, just straight up, you're dead. Like <laughs> That makes him super powerful, and... It is a very niche situation because you do need to have this guy at at least Zenkai 6 to get that supporting uh, unique from him. But people who are able to do that, just this guy becomes a monster. Um, and I'm not really gonna, I don't really, I mean, in that situation, he definitely would be all the way up here, probably top of tier one. Um, 
But in most cases, I think he's probably fine down here because his defense is pretty bad. Uh, his lock is only, what, three three times, but still very impactful. Uh, his green card is not great because it's very easy to play around. So I don't know. Uh, he's he's showing his age a little bit. He's almost a year old at this point, so it's to be expected. Blue Gogeta, very good, very solid. Everyone uses him. Uh, or has used him, if you have him. Or have at least you've played against him, right? So... Again, like I was talking about earlier, with, the, with we, we, can, we can just throw Green Gogeta into the same discussion. I think Blue Gogeta is significantly better than Green Gogeta. I would probably move this, move this guy down a few uh, stages. I really am not a fan of this card at all. I think this guy's better. I think this guy's better. I think... Nah, it's hard to say. He probably belongs somewhere over here in this area down here. Um, but Blue Gogeta, I mean, we talked about Super Vegito and why I think he's down here in in S tier because the team is just not where it should be right now. Um, this guy was insanely good when he came out. He's sort of fallen off a bit. Again, he's been out for a year. He's a year old. You would expect him to sort of fall off at this point, but you know, he can be good still. It's just, I don't know. He's just, he's just, he's good, but he's not great. I think that's the best way to explain it. This guy we sort of talked about already, I'd probably move him down a few. He's just not impressive to me. His green card is okay. He does okay blast damage. He has horrendous strike damage. His main ability is good. I think his main ability is what saves uh, this card from being in tier 2. Um, because that does a lot of damage. Uh, this guy, time transformation, he's good, but he's not exceptional in any way. I did use this guy in ultimate battle alongside the, uh, b the new blue Goku, this one up here. And the blue Goku made this guy do insane amounts of damage, so there might be something going on there. Uh, he's probably where he should be. I think this is a good spot for this guy. Purple Trunks, he does a lot of damage. Um, special move card, has blast armor, so you can use his his main ability to draw full hand. Most of the time you will draw a special move arts card, I, I want to say. Green card as well, gets rid of your hand, powers up special move. Uh, supports hybrids, I think. Yeah, I think he supports hybrids, so... He's good. Tri time transformation, though, and it, but it's not the biggest deal in the world that this guy's tra time transformation expires because he doesn't, he doesn't become like useless like this guy or Shallot. This guy, I already talked about him, but I think I'd move him up a little bit. Um, he's still super impressive to me. Green card is insanely good. Re fully recovers Vanish if you can make use of it correctly, and his ultimate does literally nuclear damage. <laughs> Um, he does have cover cut as well, so I, I mean, this guy's all around very good. I think I'd probably move him up here. Um, is he better than Sin Shenron? Probably not. It's hard to say. They fulfill similar roles, but I think this guy probably does it better. I think I'd move him up one spot ahead of Sin Shenron. Uh, Red Vegito. He was really good when he came out, and he still is good for the bench for Fusion Warriors. Um, but in terms of actually fighting with him, he does have a lock, which is his best asset by far. Um, but he just doesn't, doesn't, do, any, doesn't do any damage. He does literally, literally zero damage. So I think once we get one good fusion character, like one more really good fusion warrior character, this is going to be the first guy who's going to get replaced in the team. Uh, but he deserves to be here for sure. Uh, this guy, <laughs> this is going to... So we have three LFs all sort of in the similar area here. We'll talk about this guy first. He... Um, He's fallen off a lot. I'm just going to straight up say it. He obviously wants to be the last man standing. And in that case, he is very, very powerful. Especially if a Goku has died on your team. So he wants to be on... He's, he's specifically made to be used on the Sun Family team. Which is no surprise, right? That's, that's what he's been for a year now. He can 3v1 very easily. He's um, a red LF unit. I would say between him and Bardock, Bardock is just going to every single time be better. Um... So, I mean, he's good. Uh, a Sun Family team can make use of him, but I just... There's so many better Sun Family units now, like Super Saiyan 4 Goku's just better. Um, let's just scroll through the list. I think I'd even take this guy. Um, even this guy, this, this blue Goku, he's better. This guy's better. Um, who else? This guy's better. This guy's better. Uh, this guy's better, and uh, yeah, that's... And even this yellow Gohan, too, you can use him. So, I mean, there's just way more good Sun Family is than there used to be when this guy released initially. So, I don't know. I think... I think he's fine being down here. And, like, the beginning of the match, this guy doesn't do any damage at all. Android 18, um, she really only belongs on the female warrior team, uh, and then 
if you 14 star her, she can go on the Android team because she, I mean, yeah, on the Android team because she starts buffing that with her Z ability, which is a very weird decision by them. I don't know why they did that because <laughs> no one's gonna summon to make her 14 stars. I don't know. Um, she's very annoying to fight against. I probably one of my least favorite characters to fight uh, because of her cover change ability, making everything cost super high amounts of uh, of a key. Um, and she's pretty good at tanking. She can have her combos last for super long periods of time. And yeah, she heals too. Destroys Dragon Balls. There's a lot of that like annoying stuff. A lot of the intangibles that people don't really talk about too much. So, yeah, she's good. Um, would I move her up at all? It's hard to say. She really doesn't do that much damage, which is her issue. I think she's fine where she is, actually. Next, we have Android 13. This guy does a ton of damage, but he's super one-dimensional. Like, he is very similar to this Golden Frieza, to be honest. Like, they, they're both green and on their respective tags and respective teams. They're both just pure offense. That's all they are. This guy can stun. This guy has an ultimate. I think this guy's probably better than him now, though, just because of the fact that Ella Freeze is out. I'd probably move this guy up probably here somewhere, or maybe even above here a little bit. This guy should be moved up a little bit. But this guy's not bad. He can feint with his main ability on every one of his Strike Arts cards, which is super insane. It's just really oppressive if it happens one or two times in a fight. Um, yeah, he's annoying to fight against. Golden Frieza, we just talked about him. LF Goten, we'll get back to these guys later. Blue Cooler, um, so I think this guy's easily better than Blue Cooler now. Um, but Blue Cooler is not bad. Uh, I think if you were going to choose one LO LOE unit to Zenkai Awaken, it would be Blue Cooler. They really need a powerful blue type. This guy is my blue type that I'm using right now. I think if this guy gets a Zenkai Awakening, the team Lineage Beeble would probably be one of the best teams in the game. Probably two or one. I don't know if they're. Be I don't know if they'd be better than Regen, but they'd probably be number two. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, he is sort of in a similar boat to how the Super Saiyan Bardock is. He's just really, really impacting the team with his supporting abilities, but he himself is just not great. Like, I'd rather just have the support be the the LF Frieza and then be done with it. LF Goten and LF Goku. Uh, LF Goku, I think, is definitely worse um, than LF Goten. I think LF Goku is the worst LF unit in the game. I don't think that's... A, I don't really think that's, like, shocking to anybody. <laughs> um, these, pro these are t two lower LFs in the game at this point, in terms of how good they are. Uh, I think Goten is better just because he does the, he fulfills his role better, which is just a straight-up damage dealer. This Goku just got his um, Platinum Equip recently, which is really, really good. So, I don't know. I think we'll eventually see this guy get a Zenkai Awakening, because he really needs it. Uh, this Goten, I mean, he just does a lot of damage. He gets key back. He supports Gohans, which is nice. And I think that supporting ability for him, um, for other Gohans, puts him ahead of this guy. Um, just inches ahead of this guy. I think the difference between these two is not super big. Um, if you if you came up to me and argued that this guy is better than Goten, I really wouldn't disagree. But I personally think Gohan or Goten is a little bit better. Um, that's pretty much everything we got going. I will scroll through the lower tiers here in a sec, just so you guys can see the other units on here. But uh, let me know down below uh, what you guys think about this video. I'm sorry it went for so long. I just Got super into it. Uh, my voice is sort of starting to fade a little bit. This is probably the longest video I've ever made, to be honest. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, hopefully, we can have some good discussions down below about uh, this tier list. I know a lot of you guys were asking for me to make one for a long time, and I thought I think this Game Press site makes a pretty good tier list, so I might as well use it as sort of a leverage on my own uh, thoughts and opinions about the units in this game. But uh, that is going to do it for this one. Shout out to the guys at Game Press um, for making this tier list. I think it's very, very well done. And I will see you all in the next one.